Okay, so let's look at Lewis acids and bases. And this is covered in section 11.8 in the textbook Blackman. So in Brunsted Lowry acids, uh, acid base theory, uh, acids are proton donors. If we look at Lewis acid base theory, um, acids are substances that accept electron pairs. And so uh, in terms of Lewis acid base theory, a Brunsted uh, Lowry acid may be considered as an electron pair acceptor because it's going to uh, accept a pair of electrons off a uh, hydroxide or off uh, some kind of electron pair donor. So a Lewis acid is an electron pair acceptor. A Lewis base is an electron pair donor. Uh, Lewis acids are bases don't need to contain protons. So this is where it differs uh, compared to uh, the older um, Brunsted-Lowry and the Ar Arrhenius um, theories. And so therefore the Lewis definition is the most general of acid-base definitions. So it covers all of Arrhenius acids and bases and Brunsted-Lowry acids and bases, but then goes further than that. So there's compounds that are considered Lewis acids and Lewis bases that aren't Brunsted-Lowry or uh, Arrhenius acids or bases. So a Lewis acid generally has an incomplete octet. Remember our first row elements, we like to get to eight valence electrons to satisfy what we call the octet rule. Uh, so a, a good example of that is boron trifluoride. So boron trifluoride has a structure where the boron is sharing um, uh, three pairs of electrons with these uh, fluorine atoms. And so um, if we drew out the structure of boron in this Lewis sense, we would have a structure that looks like this with um, three paired electrons in uh, covalent bonds between the boron and the fluorines. And so therefore we've got six uh, valence electrons and it doesn't um, satisfy the octet rule. And we know that these elements want to satisfy that octet rule. They want to have eight valence electrons. And so it tries to accept electrons from a Lewis base. So ammonia has a different structure. Um, if we look at the structure of ammonia, it has a nitrogen with these um, six uh, electrons uh, in um being shared between uh, nitrogen and hydrogen in these covalent bonds. And then it has a lone pair of electrons all to itself. And so overall, its valence shell, uh, the nitrogen is seeing eight electrons or it has uh, satisfied the octet rule. However, it can then uh, sort of donate a pair of electrons in a bond to the boron um, so that the boron can now satisfy its octet rule as well. So Lewis acids must have a vacant orbital in, into which the electron pairs of the Lewis base are donating electrons uh, into. So if we look at Lewis acid base theory, there's an extra little wrinkle to this uh, theory. And then we can um, categorize Lewis acids and Lewis bases according to whether they're hard or soft. And this impacts into why sulfur used to be used in older labs in cleaning up mercury spills. So these days we don't use mercury nearly as much in chemistry labs as we used to. We used to use it in thermometers all the time and many other applications, but because mercury is one of these rare metals that has a uh, significant vapor pressure and mercury is quite toxic, we don't tend to use it uh, as much as we used to. But in old chemistry labs, if mercury in a thermometer, if the thermometer broke, then uh, the mercury that was spilled will be clean up, cleaned up by putting elemental sulfur onto it. And that's because sulfur has a really high affinity for mercury. And the reason for that is that mercury is a very, what we call soft uh, Lewis acid, and sulfur is a very soft Lewis base. So what do we mean by this uh, soft and hard concept? So a hard Lewis acid has electron pairs that are not polarizable. So this term polarizable is about how easily those electrons can be sort of smushed, for lack of a more scientific word, can be sort of pulled towards another, um, another entity. A soft Lewis base has electron pairs that are highly polarizable. And conversely, a hard Lewis acid has an acceptor atom that is low, uh, has low polarizability. 
and a soft Lewis acid has an acceptor atom that is very highly polarizable. So here we've got examples of a uh, hard uh, Lewis acid and a hard Lewis base. So um, if we take a hard uh, nucleus or a hard acceptor or donor atom and we put a positive charge near it, uh, then what we find is that this positive charge it draws some of the electron cloud towards it. Uh, so we have this uh, drawing electron density towards that positive charge, but a hard um, species or a hard atom, that electron cloud will not be drawn much towards it. So it's not very polarizable. Likewise, if we have a negative charge, we will repel the electron cloud around an atom um, away from that negative charge. And so I'll so this uh, electron cloud has been polarized, but not to a great extent in a hard species. In a uh, soft species, on the other hand, um, when we put a positive charge near that, that uh, electron cloud is very soft and fuzzy. Uh, and it sort of is being pulled very uh, efficiently towards that, pol that um, positive charge. And so those electrons are sort of running towards that positive charge in a very efficient manner. And so there's a very high, highly polarized electron cloud. Likewise, if there's a negative charge, these highly polarized, uh, this highly polarizable atom gets very highly affected by that negative charge. So those electrons sort of run away um, from that negative charge. And so we can look at this in terms of um, particular elements. So a hard Lewis acid, an example would be aluminium 3 plus. So aluminium 3 plus has a, a quite small radius, so 67 picometers, and has a very large positive charge in that small volume. And so um, it is not, it doesn't have a very large electron cloud to be polarized or to polarize electrons towards itself. Uh, mercury 2 plus, on the other hand, is very large and has only a two positive charge. So it's a soft Lewis acid, and it's going to be very good at polarizing uh, electron clouds uh, of other species uh, nearby, particularly if they happen to also be uh, soft uh, Lewis bases. So we form very strong bonds with, uh, with soft Lewis bases. So uh, overall, the general uh, trend is that hard Lewis acids tend to be up in the uh, this e end of the uh, periodic table, and hard Lewis bases tend to be in that part of the Lewis as of, of the periodic table as well. So, uh, whereas the more polarizable elements are down in this region down here. So, as we go down the periodic table, and as we go across to the left, in both these directions, we get to softer uh, Lewis acids and Lewis bases. The most important group to remember these hard soft rules for are the halogens. Fluoride and fluorine is very hard. It's right in that top right hand corner. Its electron cloud is not very polarizable at all. And so fluorine tends to make interactions with other hard elements. Iodide, on the other hand, is an iodine containing compounds is very soft. It's a very low row element and it has a very polarizable electron cloud. Uh, don't worry about astatine too much. It's uh, radioactive and it's quite a rare element. So our uh, consideration of the halogens normally goes from fluorine through chlorine, bromine, and up to iodine. Okay, so that's all we're going to say about Lewis acids and Lewis bases and the concept of hardness and softness. Just remember that hard acids like to interact with hard bases and soft acids like to interact with soft bases. And uh, remember this general trend that um, in the periodic table, as we go down and towards the left, we get to softer and more polarizable elements. Okay, thanks for watching.